Welcome to Monday Night Live, the weekly training that guides professionals to financial prosperity. Join our community and let's start building your wealth. Okay, guys, uh, what I want to do tonight is um, talk about the walkabout marketing campaign. It, it's, it, I've been asked about it a couple times in the last month, and we haven't really gone over it. I think it's been well over a year. I think we do have it documented. I don't know if it's in the marketing campaign section. Um, I know we have a video on it somewhere. It was probably in the video library from Kath's um, Monday Night Live classes. You can find it there. But we'll go over it tonight. I'll give you the attachments. Um, we'll go over them, and then Beverly can put those in an email tomorrow. Um, but I also want to talk about um, – Zudelio and the use of Zudelio. So we'll, the walkabout is not a very complex campaign. It shouldn't take very long. So we should have time at the end to go over Zudelio um, and see what everybody's thoughts are on that and, and results and what actions are taken. So hold, hold on your seat for that. And if we have time after that, we'll talk about chat GPT. Okay. So in any case, uh, let's go ahead and get started here. Uh, first things first, the walkabout, um, came about a long time ago when I was, I was actually still in production and I never liked door knocking. I wasn't afraid to do it. Well, I shouldn't, let me rephrase that. I didn't have a problem knocking on doors in the, in the real estate sense that you're looking to hopefully drum up a listing. I was, I was okay with that. What I was not okay with was the fact that I don't care what neighborhood you go in. You don't know who you're going to get on the other side of that door. And people that you might not want to have on the other side of the door could be in any neighborhood, you know. Um, and every now and then, maybe once a year, you'll hear a story pop up or an hour we'll put out an article about an, an agent that unfortunately, you know, um, came across one of those situations. So so I don't recommend it. I know that there are agents that do it. Some of you on the team have done it before. Um and I'm not going to tell you not to do it. What I want to do is give you an alternative. Okay. So the alternative is what we call the walkabout. And the walkabout really is, is basically boils down to this. We don't actually knock on anybody's door. So what we do is we prepare ahead of time. We create a flyer or a, a, another variation of the booklet that we use. And we'll go into both of those here tonight. Okay. The flyer and the booklet. Um, you guys, some of you remember David Edwards. He he created a flyer that he used on a walkabout that was a condensed version of the booklet. And he got two listings out of it. And then uh, um, Odupe, we call her Mo. Some of you know Mo. She's still on the team. She did more of a full-blown booklet. But instead of putting in investor properties in the booklet, she put data on the neighborhood, active, pending, and sold for the neighborhood, as well as other neighborhood information. She got two listings out of it. Okay. So it, it definitely works, but here's how it works. What you want to do is prepare ahead of time. Obviously, whether you're using the booklet or the flyer, have both of those, whichever one you use, have them created and printed and, and ready with you at, at the, when you do the walkabout. Okay. Um, and the way we do the walkabout is this Time, timing is everything. So it's generally better to do a walkabout on the weekend, just like door knocking, right? You know, Saturday, Sunday. Um, I do know people that have done it during the week in the in deep dinner hour or evening hours. That's another thing I didn't like is I didn't like people knocking on my door when I was trying to eat supper, right? So in any case, um uh what you the reason you choose Saturday or Sunday is you're more likely to find people outdoors. They're not working Monday through Friday, nine to five. They're washing the car, they're cutting the grass. They're playing with their children. They're walking the dog. You know, all those things that you do outside. I mean, planting flowers, you know, weeding, just talking to neighbors, right? Sometimes there's even a neighborhood picnic you'll come across. But the point is, is <clears throat> you're looking for people who are already outside. That's, what you're, that's who you're looking for, okay? You're not going to find it at every single house. Absolutely not. On Saturdays, some people go out and do their chores, you know, grocery shopping, running errands, things like that. And also taking kids to, to, you know, activities, you know, baseball, soccer, or swimming, you name it. Um, but for the most part, you're more likely to find people out and about on a weekend than you will during the week in any, any neighborhood. Now, let's talk about what happens when they're not there. We'll do that first, and then we'll go into what do you say when they are there. So if they're not there, 
you can't leave anything in the mailbox. That's actually illegal. It's actually a felony. Okay. Can't do that. Um, unless the, po the postman is the only person that can put something in a mailbox. So what you do is you do walk up to the front door in some cases. And if there's a storm door, you just stick it into the store do storm door handle. Or if you open up the storm door, put it in there so it's wedged in there. And if there is no storm door, wherever the doorknob is, you roll up your flyer or booklet, stick it between the doorknob and the jam, the door jam. So it'll hold it in place. Okay. That's one way to leave a flyer or a booklet. Um, now, if you happen to walk up to a door and the storm door is shut, but the main door is open and you, you're getting ready to leave this thing in there, and somebody's back in the kitchen and they look at you and wave. Or they say, like, you know, do like that, like, hang on one second. Like, obviously, stay there. You don't want to just walk away. Stay there and let them come see you, right? That's And that's okay. Um, now, the other alternative is to walk down. Let's, let's say there's a garage with a man door, you know, a, a regular door next to the garage door. What you can do there is if you know people have in, integral garages, they're going to pull into the garage most likely in a car when they come home. And if there's a man door there and they see this thing, you know, stuck between the door jam and the and the doorknob, they're likely to, they're going to get out and grab it, right? What Dave did is he took his flyer and he used blue painter's tape. Painter's tape doesn't take paint off of a surface, right? And he would he would stick the um, flyer to the door right by the doorknob. He would even wrap the tape around the doorknob and hold the hold the flyer there, so people would definitely see it when they pulled up. So that's two things you can do. If someone's not outside and you don't want a door knock, okay? Every, everybody okay so far? In the approach? Okay. Now, let's say somebody is there, all right? Um, oh, so Gary, PF says, so Gary, should we wear anything identifying us as realtors, EXP? Yes. Th thank, thank you, uh, PF. So if you have one of those realtor tags, obviously wear it, you know? Um, I know agents, or I know well, two agents who've done this before. And they actually grabbed a lanyard that they got from an old, another conference, like a conference they went to. A lanyard is just that, you know, the material you wrap around your neck with two little clips that holds like a plastic card. Yeah, they would do that and put something in there that identifies them as a real estate agent. And that way it looks a little bit more official. And I thought that was pretty ingenious for them to do that, you know. Um, also, what you wear is, it's believe it or not, it's, it's kind of important. It's important everywhere. But what's interesting is, you know, I used to wear a suit. In the beginning years, I didn't wear a suit at all. I wore jeans and sweatshirts because <laughs> that's what I was wearing. I would go out and meet real investors, and that's what I did. So um, later on is when I started wearing suits, when I started growing the business and things were taken off. And I wore hard shoes. So I would never do a walkabout wearing a suit and hard dress shoes. You do want to dress comfortably, but somewhat professionally. And we call that business casual, Okay you know, khakis or some kind of slacks for, for gentlemen and a button down collar shirt can be short sleeve, no jacket, no tie. And for, for women, you know, really you've got a lot more to choose from when it comes to fashion than, than men do, but choose what you feel conveys an image of professional, but also makes is comfortable, right? Something you feel confident in and comfortable in, right? Cause you want people to, to respect you so your dress has a lot to do with that what you wear and at the end of the day the, the goofy part is you're probably just going to wear to wear tennis shoes you don't want to wear hard shoes and you definitely don't want to wear high heels walking around for three hours on concrete and pavement so just wear sneakers it's okay i mean think about any downtown area in the last generation probably longer than that <clears throat> people would walk to work wearing their sneakers and put on their hard shoes when they got to work right so it's perfectly normal everybody used to sing it now, um, thanks, PF, for, for bringing that up. I appreciate that. Um, now, when you meet somebody who's actually there, right, you, you want to um, be respectful of their property. You know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't just go bolting down the driveway when someone's washing a car. That, that could be seen as being a little bit bold, a little bit forward. So, you know, what I, what I would do is I'm walking down the sidewalk and someone's there in a the driveway I would make sure I got their attention or they noticed that I was there and I would hold up the flyer or the booklet like that, just like this and kind of wave it. Right. And generally they'll either come up and meet you or they'll wave you to come down the driveway. What I'm looking for is the invitation. That's what I'm looking for. So everybody okay on that. Right. Don't, don't just bolt down the driveway. 
wave a flyer, wave a booklet, and let them, with their gesture, tell you how they want to proceed. Okay, so let's say they come up and meet you. Just introduce yourself. You know, hi, I'm Gary Wilson. I'm a realtor in the area, and I have clients. And there's PF. Thanks, PF. There you go, man. Yep, you got the big R. Yep, you got one with your name. Yep, there you go. A lanyard. I mean, I I have my lanyards, not all of them, but a bunch of them, right? From before, I keep them for keepsakes. But in any case, um, what you do, this is what I would do. What I suggest is, you know, reach your hand out to shake their hand. Okay. Um, some people, believe it or not, won't take it. That's okay. Don't be offended. Just say, "Hi, I'm Gary Wilson. I'm a realtor in the area, and I have clients." looking to buy properties just like yours right here in this neighborhood. I couldn't find anything for sale hardly at all. And that's why I decided to do some homework and find out why and do some information gathering. So I did that and it was pretty good information. So I decided to put it together, a little flyer for you and all the neighbors here. Is that okay? Here's your copy. It doesn't cost anything. There's no obligation. I'm just simply trying to keep you up to date. Um, is that okay? So you want to, at some point, it's called permission-based marketing. You do want to ask for permission and just say, hey, is that okay if I do this? Most people would say, sure, as long as it doesn't cost anything. And then you would say, great, if it's all right, I'll do this every month or so, maybe every three months, whatever you want to do. Um, is that okay? Right? You're, what you're looking for are yes answers. Let's do a quick little quiz here. Why would we start asking questions where we're looking for yes answers? What's the what's the purpose of that? Or what's the underlying reason for that? Any, anybody can answer. Trial. What, what's that? Trial. Trial, yeah. Trial. There's a second word. Mm -hmm. Who knows what the second word is? Begins with a C. Closing. It ends with yes. trial close. Okay. Yep. To trial close. Yep. So you're getting to say yes. You want to get them in a yes state of mind, all right? Now, not everybody is going to be ready to sell their house. And in fact, the majority of them are not going to be ready to sell their house. And they'll tell you, hey, I'm not looking to sell. Just say, that's okay. I'm just going to keep you updated every couple of months. I live right around here anyways. This is the closest neighborhood to where I live. And, and I like it here. I might want to move here myself. Um, now, and, leave, and leave it at that. Because if you're leaving on a high note, they'll remember you. And then remember, you forgive them something of value, okay? And especially if you show up, I would say at least every quarter, at a minimum. Um, you know, some people do it every month. That, that's you got to be. That's a commitment, right? Because sometimes it can take you three hours to walk a neighborhood. Sometimes even more. Sometimes two hours on Saturday and two on Sunday. But in any case, now let's let's say they have a different response. Let's say they say, um, you know, I, I'm. I'm not really looking to sell myself. I appreciate the information, um, but I just heard the, the um, Wilsons around the corner might be thinking of moving. I think I think Mr. Wilson got a transfer. I would definitely ask them what what which house is it, um, okay, and uh, and ask if they could if they wouldn't mind sharing the last name, and then ask that person what's what. By, by the way, when you first introduce yourself to the person. Are most people likely to reciprocate? Like if I if I went up to Andre, Andre was there washing his car, and I said, "Hi, you know, I'm Gary Wilson. I'm a realtor in the area, right? Um, do you think Andre might reciprocate and provide his name?" Yeah, usually. Sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. But what if they don't? What you want to do is at the end say, "Say by the way, if you don't if you don't mind sharing your name, I didn't catch your name in the beginning. I apologize." And they'll tell you usually at least their first name, if not the first and last name, right? Then when you go mm -hmm. to the other house, 10, 20 yeah. minutes later, whenever you get there. Another oh, go, trick hey, is you, both their names. So when you introduce yourself, yeah. you're Gina Hansen, you're not just Gina, because they're more likely to reciprocate with both their names. Yep, good point. The other thing, too, is when you meet that other neighbor around the corner who's looking to potentially sell and they're there, you could say, Hey, uh, your neighbor Andre mentioned you. You you might actually be uh, thinking of selling. I'll be I'll be happy to give you a, a complete market analysis if you'd like to do that. You know, so any case, but back to the original conversation. Um, you always want to get the next thing, whatever the information is, a person's name, an address, or better yet, set an appointment. So 
let's take it a step further. Let's say Andre says, you know, it's funny you came by here. I've been thinking about this. You know, our kids are grown and gone now. They live in different states. You know, we're 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 thinking of moving to Florida. Um, but we just haven't done anything about it. It's just just a kind of a dream. Um, you know, you know, I, I guess at some point I may be ready, but uh, you know, and then and they might ask, you know, what's involved or is it, you know, we bought this house 20 years ago, but is what's changed? What are the pricing? Here, here's a real good question. When somebody asks this question, guarantee they're interested. When they say, what do you think my house would sell for? Right? Let's make that a quiz question. Okay. Let's say Andre asked for that. He says, well, what do you think my house would sell for? What would be the best response we could give? If, you don't, don't be shy. You don't, don't just wait on Gina. You know, I don't know. I'd love to look into it for you. How about meeting yeah. tomorrow at three? There you go. That's what I would, I would say. You know what? Uh, I have the statistics here on the sheet, but these are other houses. If you don't mind, let me finish my, my, my job today. Tonight, I'm going to go gather all the information specifically for you and your house. Is it okay if I bring it by tomorrow about the same time? All right. And let's let them say yes or no. Or they might say tomorrow is great, but can you come by after dinner? Absolutely. I love going by there after dinner. Who, who's home after dinner? Everybody. Spouse. <laughs> exactly. There's nothing worse than getting somebody excited and then the other spouse isn't there and then you can't, then they won't answer your call and you find out three months later the spouse has no interest or whatever. But when you're both there, it's great. And remember, you want to think, you want to focus on the process, not the result. The result will take care of itself when you focus on the process. So the process is you show up loaded for bear. You want all the information you can gather. You want to actually create a presentation for their house. You can do a simple CMA or you can do a full-blown presentation. For those of you who are in EXP, you go to your, your EXP enterprise, which is your back office, scroll down all the, all the big blocks of all the things you can click on, go down to uh, marketing, right? And they have a whole section of ready-made templates. I mean, beautiful for everything, flyers, newsletters, listing presentations, it's all there. And all you got to do is just copy, copy. We call it, we call it um, R and D or S and D swipe and deploy, right? You just fill in the blanks. It's that easy, but come prepared and always have your computer with you. You don't have to bring a bunch of blank forms because if you have your computer, you'll have everything you need on your computer, right? As far as forms goes, because sometimes people, will say, um, uh, they'll, they're, they're right. They'll, you can get them ready to sign on that. They'll, they'll say, you know what? Um, your timing is impeccable. I know you probably just got lucky coming across this house, but we really were getting ready to, to, to just call the local Howard Hanna office or something like that. Um, and here you show up. And here's why this is important. Which agent generally gets the listings? And numerically speaking, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. Which first. agent generally gets first, first one? First. Yep. And it's not even close, guys. It's like statistically, it's like 85%. So half this business is just showing up. I hate to be so glib about it, but it's true. You, I mean, if you're just halfway prepared and you show up wearing business casual, right? And this time you might want to wear hard shoes. Um when you're prepared, you can show them what the other house is sold for. You can show them what their house might sell for, at least give them a range. You can talk about the inspection. You can talk about the appraisal, talk about the entire process. In fact, I would bring, you know, eight things you need to know to sell your house with you. It's on the website. If you go if, here, let me share a screen. I'm going to go to the website anyway, so let me bring this up for you. And you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. It's going to take a second because we're on, we're on a way out in the country satellite technology here. So sometimes this stuff takes a while, but I'll describe it to you while we're waiting in on the team website. You, so you don't even have to be a team member to get this information. All right. All right. If you click on resources, 
Um, go down to free ebooks. Okay, you click on that. Let me get my taskbar up out of the way here. Okay. Now, these are what we call our mini books. These are free for everybody. Anybody can grab these. Um, you know, I'm not seeing. Let me go back up at the top here. Hang on one second. I wonder if they took out. Oh, it's not PR or media, Monday Night Live. Um, okay, guys, so I'm going to have to drop back and punt on this one. There's there's other books out here. Oh, I know where they are. Hang on a second. I apologize. Let me get logged in here. These are all on investing here. And these are what we call little mini books. They're like 10 pages long. Where I'm going now has the full-blown books plus the ones I was alluding to when it comes to um, giving somebody eight things you need to know to sell your house. Mm -hmm. And again, it's going to take a second to get loaded there. Um, any questions so far on this? Actually, let's do a quick poll here. Um, type in the chat box the words, I am. If you're comfortable with this mm -hmm. so far, the walkabout versus traditional door knock, and if you could type in the chat box, I am, that would be awesome, which means you're comfortable with doing a, a walkabout. Um, and I highly recommend it. Now, think about this, guys. It's July 31st. We got exactly one month left. Well, one month and a, a week before Labor Day weekend. You think people who haven't sold yet are starting to get a little bit nervous, right? Or maybe they've been thinking about selling, but they're not sure if it's too late in the season that they wait too long. Um, this is a perfect time to do a walkabout. Most agents don't go to this length. But the, for those of you that said I am, and you actually take action on this starting tomorrow, you just increase your odds of success dramatically, right? And, I, and I'm going to tell you first off, right off the bat, I know agents that have done this that didn't get anything, but I know other agents that have done this and have done a lot of business with it. You just never know, but that's why you get in the game and swing the bat. Um, you know, marketing isn't the kind of thing you just do once. You've got to do it repeatedly. Um, and I'm a few more tips here, and then we're going to move forward. I mentioned going out on Saturdays and Sundays. Um, some of the agents have said that Saturday morning is always best. I've had others say that Sunday afternoon is always best. And believe it or not, I've actually had agents tell me that Mondays work best for them. I have no idea why. But you know, predominantly the weekends are the are the best bet, are your best bet. Um, hey guys, this thing's just taken forever. Um, I know I clicked on the, the memory login. And we'll come back to that when we when, when we get a chance. The point is, is when you show up for an appointment you want to be prepared and if you have a guide you know eight things you need to know to sell your house um that's ultimately what's going to be on the the, the member site where i was going to show you here in a second um you, you'll have a distinct advantage okay um now another thing is this um on the walkabout is you might imagine every month something else is going to go up for sale something else is going to get sold Something else will be under contract. So what I like to do is do a, uh, a a little interim visit to the neighborhood. But instead of going to all the houses in the neighborhood, excuse me, um, I would I would pick the ones that are around another house that actually had a change of status. So wherever a house went under contract, or uh, was sold, or was listed. I would print flyers, 25 flyers for, for all the houses around that house, the so 25 houses around that house, showing the changes. Here's the one under contract. Here's what's sold, and here's what is listed, newly listed, okay? Um, I would do that, and sometimes it's two or three homes, depending on how active the market is, but I would only hit the 25 homes around those homes. You're basically um, increasing your odds of having an interest in what you're providing because let's face it, if you're within 25 homes in most neighborhoods of a house that just sold, you're probably going to want to find out what it sold for. Now, I know there's competition out there, but most realtors will send a postcard out and say, did you know the Wilson's house just sold for X? Okay. And sometimes that'll get 
a response for people, but it's not is that the statistically it's not as uh, prolific is when you're actually seeing people in person, right? So the walkabout hands down is, a, is the best way to get listings, in, in my opinion, traditionally speaking. These are for traditional listings. Okay, um, here's what I was talking about. If you log into the members area on the team website, click on books, okay? These over here are the full-blown investor books in you know, 150 pages plus. These are the ones that are part of the public domain, okay? That means you can grab these books, repurpose them, put your name on them, or you have to create, provide what's called a citation, which is information provided by X, okay? But then you can put your picture on it and your name, right? Um, so here it is, the big book for the serious buyer, the big book for the serious seller, eight steps to whom. What you want in this exercise is the big book for serious seller. Okay, that's the one you want. Um, now, back to what we were talking about. Uh, the interim visit, I would do that at a minimum every month, sometimes every two weeks in an active market and the, do the full blown walk about, I suggest easily every quarter. I mean, you want to, you want to give everybody as much chance as possible to see your face right in their neighborhood, you know, giving people information, chatting it up. Um, you'll make friendships out of it. You'll get invited to, to picnics and things like that. Um, and you will definitely get referrals. So I'm going to I'm going to kind of sum up this last piece here before we show you the book and the flyer. Um, referrals are big, and you'll find people if you create front of mind presence. Even though they might not be interested in selling or buying right now, they likely will know somebody who is. So they'll go to work Monday. Somebody's going to say, you know what, uh, my wife got transferred. We're we're moving to, you know, we're moving out of state. We so. You know, we just want to let you guys know this. Well, we know they're going to have to sell. So that your contact for the neighborhood will likely say, you know what? I think I've got a great realtor for you. He or she works our neighborhood all the time. She's always out there handing out information. She's not pushy. She's respectful. And she definitely knows what she's doing. I think she's the person you want to talk to. And that's how you get referrals. And those referrals, you don't have to give a referral fee to some other agent. You know, that's all your commission. You can't give a consumer a referral, a referral fee, excuse me. So referrals are a big deal. And if I've had them come in from church, work, relatives, neighbors. I mean, people on other other children's, their sports teams, parents of other kids on the sports teams. I had it happen to me in Boy Scouts. Um, and the only reason it happens is on a regular, consistent basis, you're giving out flyers and booklets. Now, sometimes they can be electronic. They don't always have to be in person, but I would definitely deliver them in person first for the walkabout. Then later on, after you're established in a neighborhood and you have emails, yeah, you could probably send those in an email if you want to. But I'm telling you, and let's 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 ask for some feedback for some of the veterans here. Um, for the veterans, would you guys agree in person when it comes to buying and selling homes in person at some point, face to face contact? Is the best way to get a yes. Let me absolutely. stop the share here. Yeah, absolutely. You get that rapport with somebody belly to belly. Absolutely. Yep. So I agree. Belly I belly. Agree. People will look you in the eye, shake your hand. They, you know, it's different than different candor and different tone and inflection in your voice. Yep. All that stuff matters. Yep. One hundred percent. So, okay. And people have um, decide they're going to trust you or not trust you. The other thing too, is it's almost the exact opposite in commercial real estate um, because you can do the same thing in commercial real estate by um, like I used to, I often would go downtown and go from business to business, shaking people's hands during the day. And um, you know, you can get to know some of the players in different areas by doing that. If you're in commercial real estate. You don't do it on weekends, obviously, but. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, I agree. Um, hey, guys, any questions on this so far? I'm, I'm going to go ahead and show you the booklet and the flyer, but I just want to make sure you're mulling this over, thinking it through. And um, the best way to prepare yourself is, is actually do a vision exercise, a small scale one. You know, picture yourself actually doing this. What would you wear? 
what would you say? How would you carry yourself? What time of day would you go? You know, things like that. Um, that that's one of the, the secrets to success, like in athletics. You talk to any snow skier, golfer, they they visualize before they go out there and perform, right? They picture themselves succeeding. Okay. Has anybody done that before, by the way? You visualize what you're going to do that day and you picture yourself succeeding. Yeah. I should probably get back to doing that. But yeah, it's <laughs> something I used to do and it works. It does. It does. Live yeah. I, I used to, I don't know if it's my, if I coined it or not, but I, I used to say it and I thought it sounded fancy. So I kept it and I called yeah. it mine. But I said, live into your vision. That's kind of what I started saying, you know? Yeah. That's it. Um, okay. I'm going to go find the flyer here. Uh, let's see. <laughs> I have a quick question about where, uh, Gary, especially in your okay. your own neighborhood, uh, where everybody's like used to seeing you in your yard doing yard work and walking around with a dog in shorts and t-shirts. Uh, would it be mm -hmm. like if you would it be okay to wear something similar to that that is not too far from what they normally see you, or do you have to go business casual? Um, a lot of it's going to be almost culturally where you are. So I, I can tell you for a fact, if you go do this in Southern California or Florida, you're probably going to want to wear shorts because everybody there is going to be wearing shorts. You know, um, I mean, I've, I remember when I taught a class and it was uh, Coronado, San, out right out, you know, San Diego, essentially. And everybody was in there wearing more shorts and Hawaiian print shirts. And they were not, nobody was wearing Long pants, dress shirts, ties, jackets, anything. Not a, at all. Um, usually that's the case in Florida. You'll see more people in Florida. They might wear a golf shirt, but they're definitely going to be wearing shorts, right? Um, and if that's the case for you are, I would just do that, you know. Now, generally, in, in, the, in the north, you're more likely to see people wearing longer pants and, you know, things like that. Um, but I'd say with a PF... Whatever is customary for your neighborhood, your area, like if you're going to actually do your own specific neighborhood, people already know you. Um, I wouldn't go, I wouldn't divert too far from what you would normally wear. You know, I, I would, for me, I would probably, right? I was in Florida in shorts. That's probably what I would wear. But, you know, I, I always wore long pants and a, a button down collar shirt, but shorts, short sleeves, you know. So, so, yeah, awesome. Thank you. you. Just, you definitely got to think through, um, you know, what's custom for your. Yep, you're welcome. Um, okay, guys, I'm going to share a screen again. And if you do have questions, please either type them in or just unmute yourself. Um, all right. Now, this is the flyer that they've created, and this goes back um, two years ago. So, he chose to do a flyer because it's a lot less expensive. It's one sheet of paper back and front. And what he does is he gets people's attention. So um, right at the top, he tells you exactly what it is, neighborhood market activity report, his contact information, right? So they knew who it came from. And then the date range of the activity that he's going to provide, right? And he only, and he, he did this on purpose. He only did this for single family homes. That was all. He didn't do it for duplexes, triplexes, uh, apartments, condos, anything, just straight single family homes, right? Um, and he says right there at the time, nothing was available. You guys remember that? There was nothing available, right? And and it would emphasize by saying this was the strongest seller's market in 20 call or text, right? Now, um, in any case, the market is still good in most areas, still strong in most areas. In a few areas, it has started to soften. Uh, the Fed did just raise rates again. I think you guys probably saw that last week. Uh, not the end of the world. Uh, it's you're, you're probably looking at another another one this year. It could be two more this year. I don't. We don't know. Um, but eventually, the market's gonna gonna the market response will be more widespread. But for right now. Um, you still need to go the extra mile to get listings. And this is, this is one surefire way to do it. So in any case, 
Uh, then he provided, so there was no active listings. He put that in there. Then he provided what was under contract. And if you look, I think there was like maybe 16, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, so 13 under contract. So think about that. There's no active listing at the time he did this, and there were 13 properties under contract. I mean, that is a smoking market, right? So anybody that's thinking of selling would be crazy to not entertain selling at that time, <laughs> you know, because they know they're going to get top dollar or multiple offers, all right? And then he provided the sold. So if you look at the sold, it's about almost the same, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. So 11 have sold uh, in the last, the prior three months, right? And what was active in the prior three months was a little bit more. So there's actually more, I'm sorry, under, pending, not active, but pending. There's actually two more pendings. There's more pendings than there are properties that have sold in the same time frame, right? So then he emphasizes it again. We're truly one of the most unique sellers markets in history with with regular low inventory, regular low interest rates. If you've ever been considering selling your home, um, now is a great time to get a thorough free no obligation home evaluation. And he provides his contact information again. All right. By the way, I just spoke to him. For those of you who have been on the team for a while, he's up in Maine. And um, I was hoping to get to see him, but I'm not going to have time because I'm going to Quebec instead because that's where Dana's going. And we're in Maine. It's it's not easy to get to between the two the two. Uh, Area. So, so in any case, back to this. Uh, I want to get your what questions do you have on this flyer? Um, and any any critique? Does anybody have any feedback or critique on this flyer? You know, what do you like? What do you don't like? Um, pay attention to the coloring. Would you say this is very eye eye pleasing uh, coloring there? At the background of the beach, lots of blue. Yeah. Uh, does it, would it matter if you print that on your home printer or should you go to Kinko's or Staples? Yeah, if you have, a, a, if you have a, a decent Yeah, if you have a decent home printer, I would just use your home printer. Um, if your home printer is not that sophisticated, um, you need to be careful because you can go through an ink cartridge pretty quickly when you print color, right? So the better printers generally, the ink cartridges are designed to last much longer. The more they cost more, the printer costs more. The better ones, but they're more way more efficient. And I, I years ago I had a cheap one at first, and then plunked down the money to get a really good. Uh, it was a, it was an, actually an office grade printer is what I bought, not a home not a home grade printer, but an office grade printer. And over time, I probably saved way more than the cost of the printer. And savings in uh, ink, you know. So, but uh, who knows? Who knows why? Why would we like using the color blue? What do we know about the color blue? How does it affect people psychologically? It's relaxing and then calming. Yep, it's calming and it's trust. Oh. It's like oh, yep, yep. You feel comfortable because you trust, right? So. Interesting because if you look at other colors, like red is supposed to be a no-no color, but you know some of us used to work for a company where red was their main big color. <laughs> you know, um, I used a variation of red because red is an action color and blue is, like I said, a calming, trusting color. So when we came up with the the um, team logo. We used. A uh, variation of red, a variation of blue, and white, red, white, and blue, which is you know colors of the U.S. flag. So we kind of maybe we confuse people. I don't know, but it's we're still here in business, you know. So, okay, um, you guys are going to get this tomorrow in the email. <clears throat> Anybody that registered for class is going to get this, and you're also going to get this. This is from Modupe, right? We just call her Mo, and this is. Her, area, her neighborhood up in near St. Louis, Riverwood Estates. Now, this is a full-blown booklet, but not in tra traditional sense. She didn't provide, um, you know, examples of flips and rentals. So there is fourth quarter real estate info for 
Riverwood Estates, right? Beautiful picture. And what's cool about this is think about this. Let's say you live in Riverwood and you come home at the end of the day and you get your mail, all the junk mail, and you get this thing that's stuck inside your storm door or Mo handed it to you directly when you came back from walking your dog and you live in that neighborhood. What's the first thing you notice right away when you look at this cover page? What's the first thing you notice? Go ahead and shout it out, guys. Don't be shy. This Welcome is home. The, the subdivision you live in. The Welcome subdivision home, you live in. Yep. That's like right to the heart, man. You know, you actually show them a picture of their neighborhood. Guaranteed. They're going to look at this thing. I love it. It's genius. You know, and there's Mo. Yep. Contact information, email, phone number, right? That's the name of her. She's an EXP agent, but that's her. Um, her logo and brand, Open Doors Realty, you know? So in any case, uh, then she explains what this booklet is all about and does a quick little trial. If you ever have any questions about the current market or about us, please call me. Here's Mo, right? My personal phone number. I trust you'll find this booklet of value. She actually uses the word trust. Whenever you can do that legitimately, I'm mm -hmm. telling you, you're going to... Yep, it's 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 gonna work. it's gonna open. People will respond to you. Okay, now this neighborhood was smoking hot. Check check some of this. I don't want to go into all the statistics, but just check it out. So, um, these are closed properties. All right, and she gives you all the details from the MLS, which called the Realtor View. Right. So there was nine in the quarter. Um, average $118 per square foot. You can see the sale price almost like Dave's values, like in the low 200 to 300 price range. Okay. And you get the actual, uh, the averages. Okay. And they sold for 90, almost 97% of list price. Okay. Then there's more close. Look at all that. So that's just, a, that's just one page. I think she broke this down. I forget how she told me she did this, but there's, um, I guess there's different sections of the neighborhood is really what it ultimately comes down to. But look at all these sold properties. That is a bunch. You know? I mean, my gosh, it's cool. there's 30 there, 30 count. All right, now, here's the summary. Okay, so there's... Uh, 14 active at the time of this printing, active listings. And look at how many were under contract. 56 were under contract. That's literally, that's, that's, there's four times as many properties under agreement than there are actively available for sale. Four times. That, that's just crazy. And look at the number of closed units 712. Okay. I mean, now, this was a one-year period, by the way. She did hers over a year. In one year, 712 properties sold. At the day of the printing, 56 were under, under agreement, and 14 were actively listed. Okay? Um, want to know how much your home is worth? Call me today. Let's set up a free consultation to see how much your home can sell for in today's market. Sell for is an embedded command. Okay? Right? So, so tonight, you've got an embedded command. And you got a trial close. Those are, you don't need a little, a bunch of those things. Just know a couple of trial closes, right? And a couple of embedded commands, and you can have some pretty darn good marketing. Remember, she used sell for here. Who remembers that she used the term sell for way up here? Remember that? Okay. Um, did you know that you can participate in class every Monday? We call it Monday Night Live, 7 p.m. Eastern, with me and dozens of other investor agents from around the country, in fact, the world. Every Monday, totally free. No selling, no recruiting, just straight-up education on anything and everything in real estate. And we have a lot of good guests coming up once or twice a month, bringing in expertise on subjects like how to buy a house with crypto, okay? How about them apples? What, what about AI? How is AI affecting our business? How about the metaverse? Blockchain processing. We're already using it in title work. So, so come on to Monday Night Live. Be ready to take notes and ask questions because it's live and engaging. 
and you get to participate by asking questions and meeting others. So we'll see you there. Uh, go to Gary Real Estate with Gary Wilson.com, click on the resource tab, drop down, and you'll see Monday Night Live. And in there, you can see one of the most recent classes. But more importantly, you can register for class as many as you want going up to like the end of the year, I believe. So in any case, uh, do that. We'll see you on Monday Night Live. Look forward to meeting you in person. Take care. Let's see. Where did she have that? I saw it in here earlier. Um, well, in any case, um, uh, that's the booklet. So I'm going to um, stop sharing here so I can see all you guys. Let me check the questions here. Um, yeah, the colors remind me of blue sky and ocean, right? Believe, think. Are we getting this booklet? So, Jackie, yeah, uh, look for the email tomorrow from Beverly. Um, usually comes out before lunch, and she'll have the booklet and the flyer both in there. Uh, we've sent them out before. They may be on the website somewhere. I'm just not sure. Um, let's see. This is all about the colors. How did he make that? What site did he use? Oh, so Brittany's asking about the flyer. Um, Gina, I don't know if you remember. I, I think Dave was a Word a word guy, you know, Microsoft Office Word. Um, I don't think he used Canva, although I do know agents that use Canva and have a, really a lot of success with it. It's an extra cost, um, and Word is, quite frankly, I mean, it's pretty good. You know, for this for the for this purpose, I'd say, if you already have Microsoft Office, if you have Word and Excel, the basic ones, you're probably going to be fine. You know, um, let's see. Uh, does he need permission to post addresses on the poster? Um, no, the only time Valerie. Um, I want to make sure I say this correctly. We're not actually advertising the properties for sale. What we're doing is we're using the properties um, within the context of a larger purpose, which is trying to get people's attention, right? We're trying to establish, we're trying to get an appointment is what we're trying to do. These properties are merely examples of what's out there today, what's active, what's pending, and what's sold. They're not, we're not, the content, the context is not that we're actively trying to promote those properties. That would be different. Um, if you're publicly promoting another agent's listing, you should always call and get their permission. I know people make the argument, you don't need to do that, but I think you should, because I've been told that from a lot of brokers. Um, even though we're all reciprocal, remember all the brokerage sites, like Paul War Banker is promoting REMAX listings. REMAX is promoting EXP listings. We're all promoting each other listings publicly in a public forum. You and I as agents have websites associated with those brokerage houses that we're with. Okay. Um, now many of you here are with, with EXP, of course, because there's been such a massive movement of agents over there, but the, the technology and the technology is superior. I mean, I, I got no shame in saying it. I've, I've been around, I've taught, you know, thousands of classes in all 48, lower 48 states. And I'm telling you, Technology makes a difference. So you go for the best technology. Um, in any case, with this, um, with the technology, we are reciprocal with all the brokerages. Every brokerage is. So you would think that we can pr actively promote other people's listings. The way you do it is on your website, you provide a link to the search page that your broker provides. That's how you do it. Okay. So in any case, uh, uh, any questions, guys? Go ahead and, uh, oh, Gina, you got a question? Well, not really a question, more of a statement. You're, you're muted. Dang it. I muted myself to talk. This is sure. crazy. Um, I know you're from Pittsburgh area. Howard Hanna up there has just um, made it so that you cannot promote their listings. or take, They've taken everything off the MLS, maybe not in Pittsburgh, but definitely in Ohio. So especially if you're going with other companies, like get permission, just like Gary says, just follow and get permission, like he says. Yeah, because yeah, there's company yeah. company by company that's kind of like removing themselves out of it. They don't want to do it. Just crazy. Yeah, the the only exception would be if there is an open listing. Open listing means anybody can can put list it and sell it. And the and that's a case by case, except for one case, and that's HUD, Housing Urban Development. Those houses are owned by you and me, the taxpayers. When the HUD house is taken back for a closure. The citizens of the United States of America own that house. So, 
even though I used to sell HUD listings, I was a, a listing broker for HUD. Um, I knew that other agents could promote my properties and I, and I couldn't do anything about it. And nor would I, I'm like, why would I tell any other agent? No, don't promote my listing. That's, that's crazy. You would say, yes, promote my listing all day long. Cause your job is to get that darn thing sold. You get the, you still get the listing commission. I know you want the buyer commission, but if, if you really cared about your clients, you would let other agents promote your listings to get that thing sold fast. Plus, you enhance your relationship, your reputation as a as a good listing agent. You sell a lot of properties, right? So, in any case, um, let me just scroll back down here. If you guys have questions, please speak up. Um, let's see, driving, and I keep getting kicked off. Oh, Lisa, at least, yeah. Well, well, one of these days we'll have you when you're at your computer. Um, let's see, Anna says you can construe this use as for educational and informational purposes, thus no permission required. That's exactly right, Anna. Thank you. Yep. Um, Heather's asking, do we leave the booklet on the door like the flyer, or is it just for someone to talk to? Now, I would do the same thing, Heather, with the booklet that she would do with the flyer. Um, absolutely. So, in any case, guys, so look for the email tomorrow. We, we're right at the one hour mark. Um, as usual, I'll stay on a little bit for anybody that wants to stay on. Um, but the walkabout is really a straightforward campaign. Good exercise, get some fresh air, meet the neighbors, establish yourself. And I can tell you from experience, I know agents personally that have done this over the years. And within a matter of, I mean, it could be three years, five years, some of them have been doing it for 10, 20, even 30 years they've been doing it. But I know agents to get 30% market share in their neighborhoods because of this one technique. You know, not overnight. It takes time. But if you're persistent and consistent, how would you like to have 30% share of a 300-house neighborhood? Guys, that that's 90 houses a year. I mean, oh. who would like to sell 90 houses a year without even leaving your neighborhood? Yep. That's a phenomenal production rate. And that's the kind of stuff that happens when you do this stuff. I know this has nothing to do with investing, but I've always maintained that we don't we we have special programs just for investors, and I want you guys to invest too. But we always have and always will work with regular consumers too. And this is one of my favorite all-time techniques. Yep. So okay. Um if you guys would like, uh let's see, this was Andre. Is it okay for me to share again if anyone interested in agent attraction? Um yeah, Andre, hang on, hang on just one second. I want to go over the Zodelia stuff, Andre, and then you absolutely I want you to do that. Um, hey guys, I was talking to Heather today, and Vanetta asked me also, um, and ironically, we're, ironically, we're gonna bring this up. When it comes to Zodelio, um, I know a couple agents that have had some transactions, but I know others that got kind of caught up in the activity phase and are, are not able to get any sales going through. And I want to lead this off with one one reminder. Um, from the very beginning, I never saw Zudelio as an instant uh, transaction generator. What I saw it as is a listing generator. Because when you work with Zudelio, you're loading up FISBOs and expires and things like that that generate cash offers that Zudelio provides you. Now, the cash offers, because their cash are generally lower, much lower than most people are willing to, to uh, entertain. Okay. But it doesn't mean you give up there. And then you can also do the, the cash offer plus, which is a much higher offer. But you part of your payment is delayed, the, the consumer. So what I recommend is this. Um, if you work with Zudelio and you're loading properties, like Heather said, they loaded 40 properties, and you're not getting any sales out of it, ask yourself, are you following up with the owners? Because let's say you're presented a cash offer or two or three, they rejected them. They're probably going to get a little bit mad, and that, that's a good kind of a mad. Because what you do then is you should call them right away and say, you know, I'm looking at this. I, I, I can see where you might be frustrated because these cash buyers always want bargains. They're always going really low and they want bargains. It looks like to me you're not in that situation where you have to sell for that lower price. It'd be nice to have cash, but you don't need to give the house away. I think we should sell it traditionally, conventional way, 
where not only am I getting the word out there, but now every agent in the area, because of the way reciprocation works, is going to get the word out automatically. They don't even have to try, and all their prospects and clients are going to see your property, which increases interest, brings in more, more uh, lookers, and potentially more offers. And this is how you get multiple offers. If you ever wondered how do people get multiple offers, it's because we use our, our our MLS system through reciprocation to get as many people there as possible. Is it in your best interest for me to bring into your property as many people as we can, generating potentially multiple offers? What would that do to the price of your house if we had people outbidding each other? And what's the answer, guys? Price goes up. Yep. That's the justification. You can say, look, and it, let's say they hesitate. Just say, you know, I understand. Let, let's let's just let's try it. Let's try it for 30 days. You don't have to sell. It doesn't cost you a dime if you don't. I do all the work. I'm taking all the risk. I could bring in 30 offers and you can reject every single one of them. But you would know for darn sure or certain what your house release would sell for at the minimum. And if you happen to like an offer, then you got your house sold. Right. Um, that's how I like to approach that. Um because you know they want to sell. I mean, think about it. And you're having a conversation. You've already in conversation with them. You've already spoken to them. You sent them cash offers. So what I want to do is um, do a little Q&A here and see who's done this, who's been working with um, Zudelio, and have you really gone full force and following up with the owners um, and, and try to show them the, the merit of listing with you. So let's just do a uh, – Gina, do you have another question? Or, it's not really comment. a question. I know Kay's using it. She's using it a little bit different, though. Did she talk to you today? Uh, no, I think we have a call coming up, but uh, we've swapped messages, okay. I think, end of last week. Yeah. All right. So I know that she has two offers that she she got, um, and I, I'm not sure how she worked that, but as investment properties, um, by putting cash offers on with Zudilio, picked up the two properties and is going to turn around and list them on Zudilio to get the cash offers back out again. So that's what she's doing. She's basically fast flipping some Zudilio. Okay. That's an interesting technique. I thought so too. I told her to give you a call. I could definitely see that working. I know me too. Yeah. So, so I know, um, Benetta and Heather, I think I know Benetta's on. I think I saw Heather too. Benetta, would you mind if you don't mind unmute yourself? Um, uh, I know you from the beginning. You really didn't have a lot of success with Zudelio, but did you try the follow up sequence where you're trying yeah. to convert them into a listing? Yeah, but you know what? Oh, in the beginning, once I gave them the offer, they weren't interested. They weren't interested in, in going forward. That was they were so discouraged by that. And I have a different script that I can use with them for that, but. Yeah, once they heard, you know, the 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 seventy percent, you know, loan to value, they just weren't interested. So I started looking for some properties that maybe needed some work or distressed properties to submit. But mm, Zilio, I, 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 they still they're still in progress as far as I'm concerned. Let me put it that way. Yeah, they're relatively new. You right. Know. So there's so. some kinks that they need to get out. So um, the turnaround time for me wasn't all that great. So I was just curious because, I, you know, that cash offer is coming up more and more for a lot of of us. So, we, you know, it's a great thing to have in, in your pocket, you know, to present the option and let the, the client make the choice. But uh, I just wanted to know if this, if anybody was having any better success was was Zudelio than I had. And I tried, to, I, I didn't put in 40, but I put in quite a few because I was a beta tester for, um, what's his name? Anyway, in the beginning. Oh, Tim. Tim. Yeah. Yeah. Tim Luke, yeah. 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 So I gave it to We know what, if you, yeah. how many, how, do you remember, Benetta, how many you actually loaded up? Probably 20. Was it? Was it? Probably about 20. Right. And how, how many did you call, like, do the follow-up? All of them. To, I called every I mean, last one of them because I had to present, okay. to, to present the offer to them. And they, they were mostly yeah. FISBOs. They were FISBOs. 
Because in the beginning, in the very beginning, Tim wanted me to work with investors, not, I'm sorry, with wholesalers. But the wholesalers, they weren't going for that. They want their money all up front right now, today. They don't want to wait. And they even right. said, several of them said to me, their companies didn't want to wait for them. That's what they're used to. That's what the company, they didn't want that delayed gratification at all. So I stopped working with them. Then I started working with Fizzballs. And, um, you know, the market being, the inventory being so tight, um, you know, the, the Fizzballs, if the houses were in good shape, they didn't want to hear 70%. They just weren't interested. So then my next strategy was start to look for uh, distressed properties or, you know, properties that needed renovation, that sort of thing. And there's not a whole lot here in Northern Virginia. These investors buy them up so quickly that shh, it, they're hard to even find. So, but I just try to, you know, work with them. Canada? Yep. Try, try the abatement um, records on the county or city site. Try that. Okay. To see if you can't find it. The 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 abatement property records, those are the people that get turned in to the county or the city or whoever it is because they haven't mowed their lawn or their paint's peeling or their house looks like hell. So that might kind of help you maybe find some of those because they are hard to find in a lot of places. Yep. I even went to, um, I went on real flow and I got some absentee um, owners and that sort of thing. I did a whole, I got to skip tracing and start calling them, but well, you know, people not answering the phone. So, you know, um, I even looked at express offers to see, you know, what was the comparison to see, because I'm already express offers certified. That's one of the things I did more than a year ago. So I looked at that, but you had to have a signed agreement with them. They want that wants to be, that needs to be uploaded for EXP before you could even get any further. So if you didn't have that, that wasn't, um, you know, going to go far. So I tried different, different strategies, different ways to go about it. But, you know, that's why I was kind of curious if anybody else was having some success, some real closings with them. And I get that it's a, a tool to try to get listings. Um, but again, I like, you know, I wanted a quick turnaround and I wasn't getting that, even though they said they were improving it. So as far as they need to get, they had some kinks now. That was a couple of months ago and I just stopped using them. I just didn't, I didn't sign up for the, after the top beta trial, I didn't sign up for uh, going forward with them personally. I just didn't. So that's my story. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Hey, by, by the way, Benetta, congratulations on your, on your big one. Thank you. Yeah. Is, is it okay if we share that with the group? I mean, you've been working yeah. on that. You've definitely paid your dues on that one. Yeah, yeah, I have a, probably the biggest potential close of any sale ever. It's an almost two million dollar deal that I'm working on with an investor. Thank you. I found uh, ten lots. I was lucky enough to find ten lots in my area, and um, mm -hmm. it's taken several months to go through them. The the LOI, the letter of intent to the PSA, which we finally got signed. Last week, and I've been working on this since March. So we're not through yet. Uh, we got we're there. We're now in the due diligence period, and if all goes well, we'll close in ninety to one hundred and twenty days. So please say prayers and all that good stuff for me. I can use. Oh yeah. So I'm really excited about this. This was really a a great. Uh, but and I do have. It's really interesting. Uh, I think Gary, you said this once you start down this road that more people will call you. So I had a wholesaler call me the other day. I have other investors reaching out to me, which is all good. So I'm excited about the, the opportunities. Good. Thank you. Yep, you're, you're in abundance. Yeah. Keep swinging the back. That's all you're telling me. Thank you. Yeah. That's awesome. Thank you. Yeah. PF just typed in. He sees a 2023 Acura RDX in your future. I already have that. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I have now. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly what I have now. <laughs> PF, yeah. how did you know? PF, PF is PF is doing some. He doing some googling on. The, you know, you can find yeah. out all this stuff about people. <laughs> yeah. Now you had mentioned oh before God, that you, your oh, favorite car is the RDX. 
Oh, yeah, I do. I have an Acura REX now. So I, I love that car. Yeah. Well, well I'm, I'm happy for you. And I appreciate you being such a trooper and an a, and a example, a role model for the team. I mean, you're, you're a great leader and all, the, all that you've done. This is, you definitely deserve this. And I can't say it enough, you know. Thank so, you. Yeah. I appreciate and, it. and the good news is once something's under agreement, you know, just know this, the brokerages, all, they, they'll they now, you got their attention. They're, everybody's focus and job is to get this thing across the finish line. So it's just notice it's not just you anymore. Now you got a whole group of people behind you. And they're on the other side too, by the way. They want to see it get close also, you know. So, yeah, I think you're going to, I think you're going to be okay. I don't want to jinx it, but I'm feeling pretty comfortable. Yeah. So. Okay. Um, Thank you much. All right. Any other questions, guys, on Zudelio comments? Has anybody else used it and had success? I know uh, Heather and JD, right out of the gate, I think they each had a, at one point, had a listing each. I'm not sure if they panned out, but um, it was fast. And then uh, Chris Patterson was using it. Um, trying to remember some of the others, but uh, it definitely looks like it's a numbers game and it is definitely a lead, a lead source. Um, you just got to make those calls, you know? So, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, if there's nothing else on that subject, um, Andre, I want to, I want to preface this with this guys. So I've been working with certain members of the team who are interested in building their downline and generating that, that passive income revenue share. Right. Cause I know I've been doing it for three years and it's really starting to, it's, it's got my attention. And I thought the best way for me to have other folks pay it forward and do the same thing is work with them one-on-one. -on -one. And that's what I've been doing. So if I work with you one-on-one -on, -one on agent attraction, so far, almost everybody's set themselves up the way we describe it. And you're getting phone calls. I know Anna's got some phone calls coming in from, from her efforts. Uh, Brianna has, Karen Green has. And I'm telling you, you just got to get through that initial wave of activity. It's just like anything in life. You've got to put the effort in. It's not much effort, I promise you, um, to I get the ball rolling. About that, yes. Since Andre's yeah. on the phone, so I have made a conscious effort to also, you know, to really do that um, this year, and uh, more so than any past year. But um, I have set up um, like an introductory. Um, well, I did the. I did two ads. I've done two ads. And uh, mm -hmm. I'm on Indeed and I'm getting calls and people, you know, I'm getting people that are responding. So I'm reaching out to them. I sent out a, um, I usually send out an email that's pretty explanatory about, you know, after, after I have an initial conversation with them and they're uh -huh. interested. And so then I sent out an email with the, with a video. And I was wondering if, uh, well, I had a, I had a scheduled call or scheduled um, Zoom call today with an agent, but she didn't show up and she didn't um, she didn't respond. Do you think? And I know from from attending a few of the attract boss, they're saying that they schedule the appointments and they actually get on a Zoom with them. What do you think, Andrea? This question is kind of you. What's yeah. your yeah. what's your? And that's what I do all the time. Um, I have a first, you know, five minute phone call with them to see if they're open to having a conversation about taking a deeper dive uh, right. into the model and right. then schedule a Zoom um, for right. as soon as possible. And right. then for me, uh, I actually, you know, get some rapport and stuff in the beginning, but actually show them the, the video, right. um, the, the Brent Gove, um, the model explained video right on a Zoom with them. And at the end, just ask them what do they like best? Oh, okay. and you do it that way. Okay. that's that's the way i've done it now other people will will have spend more time with rapport building and 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 then ask them hey you know if i sent you a video would you would you watch it and do your homework mm -hmm. um but if they don't watch it then you're kind of chasing so brent go build his business by sitting with them and doing a video and mm -hmm. that's what I'm doing as well. Now, sending the videos will work. I mean, I did that for the first two years because I didn't have time to sit down and do the show mm -hmm. them the video. But you're you're following up a heck of a lot more because gotcha. some of them don't watch the video. So gotcha. if you have the time, definitely watch the video with them. All right. Thank you. Yeah. And then after watching it and just asking one question, what did you like best? 
and they'll tell you what they liked. And right. when they start asking you a bunch of questions, answer one or two, but tell them, you know what, the best person to answer that question is, you know, Gary Wilson or Andre or Gina, or whoever in your upline that you feel is the best fit and let us help you answer their questions because it, it shows them you have a bunch of people in your, in your network and your tribe, basically that you're all working together to help each other grow and they don't have to do this alone. Yeah. I have a guest on tonight. Emma's my guest. Oh, fantastic. Here. She was here last week and she's here again tonight. Hi, Emma. Awesome. Hi, Hi. Emma. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. Well, and I will tell you guys, um, you know, we take this seriously and it is part of the model. Um, it's, and the reason is, is, you know, I've owned my own brokers before, and I've been with other brokerages too. And there was one source of income; it was commission income. We still do that. Obviously, that's primarily that's what we that's how we attract people, is because our production numbers are really good, <laughs> right? So we we have the technology. But what I want you to take seriously is, is if you can generate a second and even a third stream of income from the same set of activities, right? Who would not want to do that? I mean, it's pass. It's so passive. Yeah, like many of you know, I've owned hundreds of rentals over the years, and they call that passive income. Owning rentals is not passive income. I mean, it's passive because the IRS says it is. But all this gray hair is a result of a whole lot of me getting involved with a whole lot of properties. Over right, Benetta? Yep, she knows. So I'm telling you, this is. It shows up in your account. Every month, you don't have to ask for it. You don't have to chase it. You don't have to fix toilets. You don't have to show vacancies. You don't have to do that kind of stuff. All you have to do is say, you know what? I'm having a pretty good time over here with this company, and we own the company, which is the third thing. We own the company. We own stock in the company. It's the only company that does it like this. Three sources of income, one set of activities. So, the we, so we do take it seriously because it's a legitimate part of the model. In any case, so Andre, if, keep, if you've got other things you want to share, man, I'm happy to have you um, share with you because you're, Andre is my, I'm, I know I'll shut up after this, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> Andre is our biggest supporter, guys, and he has done so much for the team and for me and for Gina personally going way, way above and beyond the call of duty. So the, I can tell you firsthand the level of support that we get all the way up. I mean, I've, Spoken to Brent Gove and Gene Frederick, all the way at the top. And they it, they had no reason to answer my phone call. They didn't know who I was when I was calling, but they did. And that's what you get here. And it's because of guys like Andre that make that make that happen. So now I'll shut up, Andre. I appreciate that, Gary. It's always you guys, you've all been fantastic partners to work with for sure. I just wanted to share in case people weren't on a couple of weeks ago when I shared with it. Uh three weeks ago, we did we started a um, a soft launch on a new coaching and training just for agent attraction called the track boss. That's what Bonetta was just talking about. And we have a call every Monday at 1 30 Eastern time. We've had three so far. Um, if you're interested, you can go to the attract boss uh, workplace group. It's still open right now to anyone or I can add you to it. Um, and if you want to uh, check out the, uh, the membership, you can go to attractboss.com. Just the trackboss.com. That'll get you registered. Um, you know, it'll ask you who your who your um, sponsor is. Put you know whoever your sponsor is, and it'll ask you who invited you. You can put my name that invited you, and we'll get you all um, approved to to attend. But we've had some really phenomenal calls. Uh, the the first three um, were they're all uploaded to. The attract boss workplace. So you can go there and listen to them if you missed any of them. The first, the first one was more introducing the coaches and and sharing what it is and what it isn't. The second call was was mostly role playing. We were role playing the coaches with the with the agents to throw out you know any kind of objections that they would have. Um, and today's call was a little bit more overview and what it, and, and what to expect going next. Um, it really starts. August 1st, really for, for the paid version. And all, they're only charging uh, the first three weeks, like I said, were free. So people could kind of get a, a used to it to see if, you know, you see the value. Uh, but going forward, it's only going to be $197 a month. Or if you pay in full, I think you get like three months off price. Um, and that's just to pay the, 
you know, the website stuff that we have going and uh, uh, Randy, Randy Bird, who's one of the main coaches who put this together. Um, he's got some admin, you know, VAs and stuff, doing a lot of stuff behind the scenes. But we got like six or seven coaches and everyone's earning at least a hundred thousand dollars a year in in passive income. And a lot of us a lot more than that. Um, there's at least uh, Pete Middleton is one of the coaches that's going to be coming on. He's that guy from California. That's the luxury guru. He's got, I think, 1400 people in his group. Uh, me, Dan and Randy have about a thousand. And then there's some others on there as well. But uh, besides the once a week call one thirties for the coaching and training every single day for two hours. Now you don't have to do it every day, but if you did it two or three times a week for an hour, it's going to be very be beneficial, but from 11 a.m. Eastern till 1 p.m. Eastern, Monday through Saturday, um, you can jump on. And one of the coaches is live on Zoom broadcasting his calls, and they're doing uh, follow-up calls, cold calls, um, and everything in between. Uh, today, they had me do it, and it, I was struggling for, for a little bit. People were just weren't open and, and weren't letting me talk for a long. Um, I got hung up on a couple of times, not Matt, me, but Hey, thanks. I got to go type thing. Uh, but I got finally one appointment at the end. Um, but sometimes last time I, I made three appointments um, and you're getting the good, the bad and the ugly, but it's besides really learning the scripting of, of what people say and all the coaches have a little bit of different way of saying things and a bit, little different thing of doing things. And you'll pick up, different things from different people and kind of make it your own. But it's the accountability, knowing every day from 11 to one, six days a week, we're going to be on those calls. So uh, it's accountability as well. Um, so when I don't feel like it, I get on it anyway, because I know, you know, my, my buddies are going to be on there. So I really recommend to check it out if you want to get help with Asian attraction, because if you get one person, if we help you get one person, that's a, um, a NFL QA capper, it's going to pay for it for the entire year. And of course we want to help you 10 exit. Um, and besides though, the things I already mentioned, they're going to be having um, uh, contests. They're, they're making it really fun. So we can all have fun while we're, while we're doing this. Um, and I'm, I'm really excited about it. One thing that I don't have in my business is the automation for automatic drip campaigns and automatic um follow-up campaigns. I just keep calling people, you know, I just keep calling and following up. Uh, but Randy Bird's got a follow-up system for hot, warm and cold leads that he's going to be sharing with everybody. Um, and I'm, I'm going to be copying that. So there's a lot to, uh, that's going to be a huge benefit. And if anyone wants to check it out, just go to trackboss.com. If you have any questions, call or text me and, uh, we'll get it rolling. I know they, they just emailed the people as tonight, I believe, that had been coming to if you want to get started and, and be able to, uh, you know, pay for monthly or for the year. But there's no there's no commitment, long term commitment, cancel any time. We're doing this basically got set up so we could share this with the people in our network below us and help everyone hit, you know, get their FLQAs and um, and start building your passive income. So uh, check it out if you're interested. Oh, I know a lot of the Andre and Art and Gina are part of a group called the Honey Badger Honey Badger Leader Group, and mm -hmm. there is a lot of people in that group that that do that process, guys. You know, and you get to meet with people like well, Andre is one of them, one of the one of the one of the coaches, one of the leaders, and there's others with probably four or five altogether. So, um, you'd actually be with the masters, you know. Yeah, yeah, we got six or Andre's seven coaches already. already. Sure. Can I ask a question? So I've been, you know, doing looking at the attract boss for I think, you know, for a little while now. I went to one of the Saturday meetings. Now, if we don't sign up right away for, you know, to become part of it, um, will we still be able to attend those? Uh, what do you call it? The, the daily meeting? accountability calls. Yes. Yeah, I think for this week you're going to be able to because that that link, um, what's it's uh, live 
might have to look it up, but um, that link that we've been using for to log into that, that's Matt Stewart's, one of the coaches' oh, links. Yeah. Yeah, and he's gonna. St- I think that's still available for for this week um, to to get people a chance to continue coming. But as soon as they get everything really going full speed, they're gonna be changing that for the paid for the paid members. Okay. Yeah, but you can you can join at any time. I mean, if you're not ready for now, in a couple of weeks or months, we're gonna be doing it, and you can join at any time. Um, but uh, but yeah, get plugged in if you're if you're interested. I know it's it's helped me a ton. I mean, eh, to be perfectly honest with you, I I'm I'm pretty quiet. You know, I don't really talk a whole lot in a group. I'm I'm pretty quiet, um, and I don't like getting in front of everybody. And to be honestly honestly talking to broadcasting my calls, it's a little uncomfortable because you know you've got 30, 50 people listening to you. Um, I'm used to just being here at home in my office and it's no big deal. No one's listening to me except the person I'm talking to. Uh, it got, it's, but it gets me out of my, it's, it's getting me out of my comfort zone, which is actually really good. It's, it makes you a better leader. It makes you a better communicator and getting out of your, every time I've got out of my comfort zone. Yeah. It's uncomfortable, uncomfortable the first couple of times or weeks, just like when I did my first podcast, I was nervous as heck, couldn't sleep the night before. But now we do them and don't even think about it because we've been doing them for, for a while, right? Uh, so I encourage you, if agent attraction is a little bit uncomfortable for you, um, a lot of it's just mindset. But when you get plugged in with with everybody and it's a common, you know, the common community is to, uh, you know, be around other like-minded people that want to support you and help you grow your, your passive income with eXp. It gets a, a a lot easier, and I've already found by listening to Matt and and some of these other coaches that are really good. They're better than me, to be honest with you, because um, they're just really good at listening and they're really good at their dialogue. They don't even use scripts; everything is off the top of their head. But I've been writing. I'm a script guy, so I write a lot of the stuff down, and I'm starting to incorporate a, a lot of things that they've said into my normal language. And I'm getting better and better, right? So I really encourage anyone to to get plugged in. Any other questions about that at all? Or um, people are asking for the either a, a website or a, a link. Yep. Um, okay. Yep. I'll put it in the chat. Okay. Um, well, I appreciate you doing that. So. Yeah, trackboss.com track boss, track will get you registered. Um, and just go to the workplace group at TrackBoss. It's still open. It's not closed yet. And you can go in there and watch any of the other videos that are posted and, and some of the stuff that you're talking about there. Or I'll give you my phone number and anyone can call me if uh, or text me if you want more info. Okay. Any questions on this, guys? There's Andre's number and the and the links right in there. Attractboss.com. Okay. And if you if you just want to just discuss it, agent attraction with me, just set up a one on one just for that, and we'll we'll talk about it one on one too. That's what that's why I've been doing it with the with everybody on the team is just let people have a private conversation with me. That seems to help. I mean, not everybody does it, but the ones that do. You know, we we work together on it pretty closely. So, yeah. Okay. Well, Andre, thanks for for joining us again tonight and, and being such a good you know good supporter and, and leader. You know, I appreciate it. So, My pleasure. Happy to be in business with all you guys. Yeah. And thanks everybody for participating. Good good session tonight. Hopefully, you got a complete picture of the walkabout and. Um, if you want to t- discuss Udilio too, just let me know that. Um, you know, if it, I'm not saying do it or not saying don't do it. I'd say I'd say let's discuss it first and see where you are right now in your business to see if we want to add that to your marketing model. And then the third thing is definitely think about what it would be like to get that passive income coming in every month with no toilets and refrigerators and roofs and stuff like that. I, I can't emphasize how important it is. Because you want to have today's income, right? And tomorrow's income. And you can't just 
it's not an or equation. You have to work on both. You have to have one eye on today and one eye on tomorrow. And this is, this is how you do it, you know? So it's a pretty darn good feeling when you wake up and realize you've got that extra money coming in, you know, and you can take it off if you want. Maybe retire earlier than you thought, right? That's how I see it, retirement money. So maybe yeah. maybe in another 30 years I'll retire. So it's been uh, it's been life changing for me. And you know, I was working full time as an inside salesman for two years, working eight, eight, nine a.m. to five p.m. And I only called agents on a weekend and evening, so only when I had a chance. But I was consistent calling people, a couple of people a day. And within 18 months, I was making ten thousand a month. Within 18 months. And in the yep. last 24 months, I've been averaging 24,000 a month. And in the last three months, my lowest check was 32,000. And last week, last month was 53,000. It's my best month ever. And I didn't do anything. Amazing. You know, so you get paid, you're you're underpaid in the beginning when you're getting it rolling. And once you get it rolling, you're getting overpaid, you're overpaid um, you know, for for what you're doing. Yep. That's the that's the beautiful thing about passive income. Yeah. And how long have you been here, Andre? Four and a half years now. Four and a half years. So just imagine what you can do in less than five years, guys. Maybe in three years. You know? I tell you. So okay. Well, I'm gonna go spend some time with my mom. And then um just remember I'll I'll work in today and tomorrow and Wednesday, but Thursday and Friday. And we'll have my phone, but we're going to be out all day long, both of those days. I'll try to catch up as best I can. Um, but, uh, you know, definitely use the workplace, the team workplace page, communicate with each other. If you if you just stuck on something like, run, a, you know, average everyday type thing, check with the group first. If you're really stuck, if it's urgent, you know, obviously I want you to call me. I don't want you to hesitate. And uh, I'll, I'll make arrangements. So, well, listen, guys, have a good rest of the week. Uh, God bless you and your families. If you haven't set up a one-on-one -on -one for a while, please do that for the next week or the week after. And I will see you next Monday night. Okay. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Thank Bye, everyone. Bye, guys. Good night. Bye. Thank you for watching this episode of Monday Night Live. Be sure to subscribe to our channel and go to realestatewithgarywilson.com to join our community and start building wealth today.